Bro, what is that smell up in here? I'm praying, bro. Yo, what? What are you doing? Why are you praying? I gotta pray to the gods. For what? It's recruiting season. For what? Bro, come what on. are you? What are you? Four hundred question? The intelligent investor. What? Wait, what? Yo, is, is, is that Wall Street Oasis guy? Yo, stop disrespecting my boy. Yo, is that Mergers and Inquisitions guy? Yeah. Yo, stop. He's the legend. Bro, what are you doing, bro? Yo. Is that Pink Freeboks guy? Dude, that's not even banking recruiting, bro. Yo, what the? The grind don't stop. Talk about loyalty, you wanna ride with me, run to the bank, we just hit the lottery, we scope it, bail we working on pottery, copping the... Welcome back to another video. We appreciate the continuous support that you guys have been showing us and all the questions you guys have been giving us. And we'd love to punch out more videos and content for you guys to be entertained. Today, we're going to be simulating a behavioral oriented, you know, mock interview by which it's very similar to what you would typically see in a first round interview with HR or an analyst or an associate for an investment banking summer program. Yep, and for some context, we're gonna be simulating a kid from a pretty average background, right? Nothing too distinguishing. Obviously, everybody is special like you guys watching here, but no D1 athletes, no Olympians, no Instagram models and stuff like that. No MD son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and in addition to that, so basically the student's gonna be from Binghamton University, part of the student finance club. And then on top of that, from an internship experience perspective, he interned at a private wealth management firm, as well as a very small boutique investment bank for his freshman year summer. And from that perspective, also he spent his childhood playing uh, video games, Counter-Strike, CSGO, like a lot of you guys today. And we're gonna try and sort of craft all of these elements into a story that you guys could sell into a theme that's gonna perpetuate itself through the entirety of this mock interview and show yep. you guys how to sort of transform an average background and make it sound like something extraordinary. So with that said, let's get started. Yep. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah, don't doubt what you're into, man. Yeah, so so we appreciate you taking the time out to you know meet with us. Um, why don't you just start by telling us about yourself? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm a sophomore at Binghamton University uh, studying finance with a double minor in philosophy and biology. And you know, for some background, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. And growing up, I was a very competitive person. So gaming was like a very big outlet for me. And I ended up playing a lot of Counter-Strike or CSGO. And, you know, I really liked the game because it was very team-oriented and it was also very fast-paced. And I think at the same time, on like the higher levels, like it required like a lot of strategic thinking as well as like attention to detail. And uh, like surprisingly enough, um, I think like, my interest in finance was initially sparked by the CSGO marketplace, which was, which was like a platform where you could sort of trade items with other players at a negotiated price. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, that sort of gave me my first introduction in terms of like what the markets at large were, which was like how asset prices were determined by like the different participants in it. And you know, so fast forward, like I decided to go to Binghamton University primarily because of the affordability of its in-state tuition. Um, and at the same time, you know, I also had a pretty strong, reputable business program. And like, obviously, I don't, I don't think esports is a long-term viable option for me. So I wanted to do something practical and more tangible. Uh, so during like the first week of my freshman year, during my club fair, um, I bumped into like the Binghamton Student Investment Fund. And I cool. think like over there, like I was instantly interested because like the stock market sort of reminded me of like a larger and more real version of the CSGO marketplace. Mm -hmm. And you know, like that, so I joined a club and after like my first stock pitch, I was instantly interested because I realized that I really like analyzing companies and learning like the qualitative and quantitative aspects of those companies. And I think like, you know, like at the same time after talking to seniors as well as like networking with alumni, I discovered a field called investment banking. Yeah. And I think from there, like, I realized that on an ultimate level, they were just advisors whose jobs were to, like, help these very types of companies that we were pitching sort of, like, grow uh, through, like, various methods, whether it's capital markets or M&A and stuff like that. So, you know, instantly I knew that I was interested in investment banking and I just tried my best to get my hands on whatever experience that I could. Yeah. So as a result, like, during my second semester of freshman year, I interned at a place called Hightower, which is, like, a private wealth management firm. And then I ended up sort of leveraging that experience into my freshman summer at a firm called AC. Wayne, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like a boutique investment bank and there I got a, a lot of exposure to like capital markets transactions related to primarily like uh, micro, micro cap like bio, biotech and biopharma stocks and you know like uh, and the reason that I'm here today is primarily because I want to like leverage the experience that I've learned at internships as well as 
um, my skills that I've garnered from gaming and I want to build upon that foundation and yeah. at the same time I want to sharpen my like financial knowledge in terms of like companies by helping advise like various different companies across different products and industries and based on my research I think that Deutsche Bank would be a perfect place to launch my career. Yeah, yeah, no, that all totally makes sense. Sounds like you have a great background, would be a good fit. Yeah, so it sounds like you have a great experience and background and you, know, you touched on this a little bit, but you know, there are many other competitors and great firms out there like you know, JP Morgan, Goldman, and you know, other shops like RBC, and even you know, HC Rainway. Like, why do you want to you know, ultimately work at Deutsche Bank and why do you think this would be a great firm for your experience? Yeah, yeah, so I think like based on speaking with Brad from the industrials team as well as doing my own research on the side, I think there's like two very big reasons why I'm interested in Deutsche Bank. I think the first one is ultimately because of your international presence as well as your blue chip client base. I think like based on my research, I saw that you guys were like top 20 on the lead tables in terms of banking fees and stuff like that. And I think that from a junior perspective, a platform like Deutsche would provide me with an incredibly important learning experience because it would give me the opportunity to work on very large deals across different industri industries and different products on both like a domestic and cross-border perspective, which could really help me build like a comprehensive skill set. And you know, I think the second reason why I want to work at Deutsche is that after speaking to Brad, he told me that everyone on the platform was like very nice, was very team oriented in the environment. Across a lot of the Deutsche Bank teams are very collegial. Mm -hmm. And I think in addition to that, like I also really like the, the mentorship aspect that you guys offer, particularly when you guys like pick the, like the juniors with the seniors to help them guide them through their analyst years. And I think that that's something that some not not every bank has, and it's pretty important from that regards because. You know, like like your current bank, where like the runway to the top is very yeah. long. You need someone like you need like an apprenticeship based program mm -hmm. to sort of guide you through like the marathon that you're running, which I think that it's you know incredibly important, especially from like a junior perspective. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like you you have a good understanding of the firm and the culture, and and yeah, um, that that all makes sense with the story and the experience that you want to have. Yeah, it sounds like you know you would be a great fit at you know Deutsche Bank. Um, why don't you tell me, you know, give me a few, you know, strengths and weaknesses of yours? Yeah, yeah. So I think like from a strength perspective, there's two big things that come to mind. I think the first one is ultimately my ability to work on teams. I think at the end of the day, like I'm a very team oriented person. And I think that that primarily comes from my, I guess, childhood experience playing CSGO. I think like it's primarily the five on five competitive format game. And you know, like on the higher levels, you can't really solo carry your way through. So there's a lot of sort of like communication throughout the rounds and really sort of like positioning yourself to like help your teammates benefit and stuff like that to like minimize the risk of error. Mm. And I think like from that perspective, you know, I think that skill set ultimately, surprisingly was pretty transferable to my internship experience at like HC Wayne, right? When it came to deliverables and like, do, like over communicating deadlines and stuff like that. So I think that that's one of my strengths. And I think another one of my strengths is my organizational skills, because I think at the end of the day, like since my freshman year, I've been balancing like school with work study, with internships and things like that. So I've sort of gotten to the habit of like really just trying to keep an organized schedule so I could just be cognizant of when certain deadlines are and just getting things out on time. Yeah. So I think like that's something that can be very helpful to your team and you know it can be applied into banking overall given you know like like the hecticness of like the job at times. And I think um like uh from a weakness perspective, I think there's two things that come to mind as well. I think the first thing is ultimately, I think my hesitance to ask questions. You know, I think back in high school, I actually went to a pretty liberal artsy high school, um, where it's like, you know, they encourage like individual thinking and like solving problems on your own. And, you know, like when I came into, I guess like my internship at AC Wayne, right? Like I, at the beginning, I was like spinning my wheels a little bit when I got assignments. Yeah. Um, but you know, like as time goes on, I realized that in banking, like given deadlines, like that's not how you do things and you should ask questions and stuff like that. So I've been, you know, really trying to like improve upon that point by like making sure that I ask questions, like when I'm given an assignment to like eliminate any like sort of ambiguity around like the deliverable and stuff like that. And I think like the next weakness is I think just public speaking, right? Ultimately, like I, I honestly, I get like, like a lot of people, I get like stage fright in front of large crowds. <laughs> And um, I think, um, you know, I'm working on that right now by being a part of my student investment fund where like we're pitching stocks in front of everybody. Yeah. So I think, you know, at the end of the day, like I'm, I'm never gonna sound like, like Jordan Belfort up on stage, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there and I'm, I'm improving. So hopefully I yeah, can have like a, yeah. like a mediocre above average. Yeah, get, the rook get those numbers up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like, you know, you'd be a great fit here. Um, you know, last question from our perspective in terms of behaviorals would be, you know, can you tell us about a time that you worked well in a team? Yeah, yeah. So I think like the, a time where I've worked well on a team, I think was during my last, like the last stock pitch that I did for my student investment fund. 
Um, so we were basically pitching this company called Match Group, which is like an, an internet holdings company, right? Yeah. Which owns like the world's largest sort of portfolio of online dating applications like Tinder and Hinge and a lot of other things like that. And I think like the story behind it was that the stock was basically down 50% from its all time high, primarily just due to like the market environment and like multiple contractions in the tech space. And you know, like I think the story here was that our fund like didn't think that the TMT, T, like TMT stocks were a good investment at the time, right? Given like volatility and you know the, the yeah. uncertainty in markets, but we felt like you know like this, so this is like a like a once in a lifetime sort of buying opportunity. So we just as a team like we just worked together to sort of like create the stock pitch and try and convince everybody that this was a buy. Yeah. And like during this pitch, like I ended up actually taking like the position as like the lead analyst. So I did like three primary things. I think the first thing was just like sort of delegating work amongst ourselves to see like which parts of the presentation that, that, that we would handle. So it's just like the company, like deep dive, the industry yeah. overview and stuff like that. And the second thing was, you know, just working together with everyone on the team to like work on the valuation section to like make sure the assumptions that we were putting into like, you know, our, our DCF was was good and, and solid and, and stuff like that. So you can just sort of imagine like what it's like, it's just like a bunch of college students like in the library, just sort of like working together on things and then coming yeah. together at the end and just piecing together the presentation. And you know, like I think the results from this was ultimately like one, like no, like the, the stock didn't get bought <laughs> by the investment fund. But I think that we did learn like some pretty valuable lessons and ultimately just, you know, like how to like work together with other people, especially like different personalities around the groups, as yeah. well as like at the same time, you know, it, it taught me how to like not only take accountability and responsibility of my work, but also for like the, the team that I'm leading and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, that sounds great. And that's very similar to what, you know, you would, you know, experience here. So, uh, did I get the offer? I'll be honest with you, man. Like the, the, the team thinks you're, you're a big nerd. Oh, um, and, and you still haven't passed the technical round yet. Oh, um, okay. Shit. But whatever, that's besides the point. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, we really wanted to just cover the most common behavioral questions that you typically see in a banking intern uh, interview. And obviously this is not, you know, comprehensive of all the other questions that you could potentially get, like, you know, an ethical question, a, you know, more about your background, anything that covers sort of, you know, group specific questions and any other questions that you may potentially, you know, get. And, you know, feel free to drop in the comment section below any, you know, behavioral questions that you personally experienced that we didn't cover and happy to give, you know, more guidance on that and our responses if we were in your shoes and any other questions that you know we may have missed and we'll try to get back to you whether in the comment section below or on Instagram, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Obviously like behaviorals is one part of the recruiting process and interview process and we're going to cover um, the other half which is obviously the more technical side of things uh, and we're planning to make a video that covers the most common technical questions that you'll get in an interview as well. Yeah, yeah. And like, in, in addition to that, guys, just sort of remember that like these answers that we provided are sort of like bare bone, but then it provides you guys like a structure and a blueprint in which you guys can like base your answers off of for like these key behavioral questions. And in addition to like the technical interview, we're probably also going to release like a video covering like sort of, just sort of how to prep your behaviorals as well as your technicals in general. And you know, in addition to that, like we know that the summer internships are also coming up and yeah. given the tightness of the market environment, like I know that a lot of you guys are probably worried about like the return offer rates. Yeah. So we'll probably also release a video about that on how to maximize your chances to get a return offer. Cause you know, like what who better to tell you than two, you know, top book it interns. Um, but yeah, anyways, guys, like thanks a lot for watching. If you guys have any feedback and again, like any questions that we haven't covered, just put it in the comments below and we'll like type you guys like a structure or like the typical answers that you guys should say or we've heard like when we're interviewing people. Yeah. But yeah, like thanks a lot for watching, guys. Thank you. And if you like this video, please drop a like and subscribe, subscribe. below. And, and check share it with your videos. friends if you, you know, you know, yeah. have other people join the ski mask movement, yeah. you know? Mm. All right, peace All out, right. guys.